All right, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. Today we are in Butte, Montana, and we have a load of trucks, lights, and accessories headed down to Great Falls, down to the FedEx. We just uh, picked this right off the train, and now we got to send it over to FedEx to distribute it locally. And uh, for today, we have a couple things going on. Number one, I want to run you real quick through a little update on the buttons. It's not going to take nearly as long as it did last time. As you can see from the camera on the right, I've made makeshift boxes out of somewhat sturdy cardboard boxes. I'll go through that. Then I'm going to tell you what it is that we're running here today. Truck, trailer, engine, all that kind of stuff. And we'll take a short drive. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing is the buttons. I set up two of these small little cardboard boxes. I'm going to end up making them narrower but I've just ordered some project boxes uh, that I can go ahead and put everything into. I wanted to keep them small. It's not a huge button box because I want them in different locations. Again, these are going to be attached, like I mentioned in my last video, to the bottom of the desk on the left and the right side. On the left side, I'll have the ignition, as you can see here. Um, everything is, by the way, working. Um, these two things, in case you can't quite see it, let me see if I can focus on that. Should focus on it anyway. It's a switch that looks like this. And it is a six pin so that I can have the uh, option of up and down. And unlike this one that is not momentary, once I flick it, it stays there. And then I have to reset it back to uh, the uh, off point in the middle. Then I can go to the other one. Unlike this one, these two are also six pin, but they're momentary. So I flick them and these are for the windows. So when I flick them, I have to hold them down as long as I want the window to go up or down. If as soon as I let go of the button, they stop moving, which gives you a little bit more control. Uh, this button here, this uh, rocker switch, I have it going right now for the winch for the windows or no, sorry, for the windshield wipers. But I also noticed, and maybe this has been around for a while, but I looked in the options under the um, under the, the keys and buttons that you can program, and there's something called wiper back. So it actually controls not just going from stage one to two to three, but you can go from three to two to one now. And unfortunately, this is the kind of uh, rocker switch it is. It's only a single pole, so we only have three on one side, so it's making it hard for me to get... Um, control out of both the up and down so I'm either gonna get another six pin that has control so I can go up a stage or down a stage or I'm gonna see if I can put in a rotary encoder uh, with fixed spots uh, little detents so that I can go up and down all the time and I don't just have to press the same button like the light modes um, so these are working and I also have three of the toggle switches these are single pull single throw and they actually are pretty hard to press, but they're momentary, so they bounce right back. So I can go all the way through my light modes real fast. You can see on the truck there. Um, this one, so I got light modes. I've got high beams. It's just a momentary push button. Beacons. Uh, yeah, beacons. Four ways on this push button. And for right now, because I wanted to get one of my controls out of the way, this uh, alpha yoke over here on the left. I don't know if you can see it. It's off camera where my hand is. Uh, the only thing that I really needed, because everything pretty much on that yoke is controlled by all of this, with the exception of a menu button, uh, which is right here, just so I have that function and I don't have to hit a keyboard button. So that is kind of the, uh, the update on everything in terms of buttons and switches. It's very makeshift. If you look at this, this was a poor, poor design. You can actually see the light from the... USB encoder inside the box, at least from my angle. I'm going to have to be a little bit more exact when I make it uh, out of the project box. It's basically just an ABS uh, junction box, very firm so that I can press these in and it won't go anywhere. Okay, so that's kind of the update. No, I don't have loose things this time, so I am going to be using this as we go through and it'll make it a whole lot easier. Now, on to what we're actually driving today. This is Dom's 379. It is the only paid mod that I have in this video today. Everything else is going to be free. And uh, what we're looking at on the 379 is 
Goggles 56's Legacy Skin. It's completely free on the Steam Workshop, and it fits all cab models. Um, in addition to that, the engine is uh, its new to the channel. Maybe you guys have seen it. It's from a developer called JVC, the MVP. And uh, on Steam Workshop, uh, he has three engines. He's got a Cummins M11, a Cummins N14, and the one that we're going to be riding today, the one that I enjoy the most, is a 500 horsepower Caterpillar 1LW 3406E. And what's kind of cool is you can actually tell. It threw me off at first. I didn't look at, I didn't read all the information, but it actually has a two-speed engine fan that kicks in after a certain uh, point, particularly when you're pulling loads. And it also has a Westgate turbo. And it's not just that it engages uh, upon release of the throttle. It's more like it has to hit a certain peak. So it's been a little bit customized. Again, this is a free engine on the Steam Workshop, and I will have a link down in the description below. As far as the transmission, it's a Fury 6 15 speed. We've got a U pattern. And uh, final drive is 3.5. And I think that pretty much wraps it up other than uh, uh, this uh, trailer. This trailer is a Pister trailer, and it's completely free. That's right, free. It is a Max Atlas container trailer. It has tons of different cargo, uh, I guess, cargoes on it. They're all just shipping containers, but they come in different brands and different sizes. Uh, this one happens to be a 40-foot version. And these trucks, lights and accessories are weighing in at 46,305 pounds. Not too shabby. With a 500 horsepower, we will be just fine. So let's go ahead and get in the cab and we'll get to it. All right, so first things first, let's go to our accessory on the ignition. Looks good. Get So we have the headlights on right now. Let's start off. Okay, parking lights are on. Let's go ahead and get the windows down. And I'm gonna show you this. Um, you'll be able to see on the left hand side as I'm pressing this down and I let go and it stops pressing it down and it stops so I'm gonna just go ahead and take these both down let me go ahead and turn on my track IR I'm trying not to make you guys as sick anymore I actually programmed a button so that I can at any point turn off the track IR especially when I'm setting up the truck I'm gonna go ahead and do that again right now so now that I have windows down and we've got our uh, our main parking lights on and everything, let's go ahead and crank her. There we go. So we don't have any uh, beacons on today, but we are going to be getting the four ways on. Get the headlights on, parking brake is out, and let's go ahead and get rolling. I'll turn the track IR back on so I can see where I'm going. Let me know what you guys think of this engine, if you guys are familiar with it or not. Cool trailer, really unique, I like it. And I gotta say, this legacy skin from Goggles 56 is looking pretty sweet. I like how that most of the stuff that he makes, not all, but most of it, fits on all different cabs. I'm gonna let the uh, keep the windows down for a little bit so you can hear the engine, but I will be pulling it up at some point so you can hear the difference. We can get the four ways off. In 400 meters, turn left, turn left. So how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having a good uh, Thursday. This is that's when this is releasing. I'm sure you'll probably be seeing it in a few days. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You probably you might even be on the might even be the weekend by the time you see this. And I hope you guys are, if that's the case, if you're enjoying your weekend or the end of your week. Let's 
slow it down just a bit, keep it at 15. Ooh, we gotta stop at the scale. See what we're weighing in at. Probably about 80,000. What do you think? 46, 35. Yeah, I don't know. About 80,000, I wanna say. Let's see what it says. 82. So we got about 32, we got about 37,000 on the empty trailer and uh, truck by itself. Will do. Montana Freight Terminal. That's where we were. Looking clear. You got a nice little delay in the shift. You don't have to slam it right in. A little bit of fall off. And there's two different versions uh, of each engine that you can get, or most of the engines, with this uh, engine pack. And there's a there's one that's it meant to be. Uh, I forget the name of it, but it's basically operated by a carrier, and it'll be governed at 1800 RPMs, and then there's a version that is governed at 2100 RPMs. We've got the 2100, we're owner-operator. And so we end up idling, I think that ends up idling at about 750 horsepower, or 750 RPMs as opposed to the carrier version which is only about 650 Fans kick on. Looks like we're peeling off to the right toward Butte. I love the glare on Don's gauges. When it hits the sun, that's so realistic. Pretty cool sounding engine. I'm definitely uh, letting it run for you. Probably going to keep it about right there. We won't, probably don't want to go any more than about because uh, we're already in the final uh, top gear. Don't want to keep it going above 1700 really in the cruise. And we're only 65 anyway, so yeah, we're about there. 
break off toward Helena and Billings. I'm going to go ahead and get the windows up right now. So I have to hold these down until it's not a one touch, since it's a momentary thing. It'll give you some precision if you want it. And with Dom's cab, it really cuts the audio. That's why I had the. Uh, that's why I wanted to keep the windows down for you uh, for the first part. Um, by the way, that sounded pretty loud with the windows down. But believe it or not, the only thing, the only, it's not like a concern or a problem uh, with this engine because I can control it. But the uh, engine volume, I have it down at I think 25% volume. It is right. so loud. Okay. Exit right. So incredibly loud. Um, and it was pretty loud with the window down. That's about the volume Exit that right. I would have it on, like have any other engine. But And keep in mind, yeah, you, you think it might sound quiet now, but it's because of Dom's cab. Uh, he really cuts down on the volume when you roll the windows up just on Dom's truck. So keep that in mind. Normally, this is if you're not riding this in DOMS, it's going to be pretty loud. It's definitely got like sound deadening. So, yeah, we're just kind of cruising. We got uh, about two and a half hours left on the drive. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about the. Um, about this, did did you guys know that there was the option for moving the or operating the wipers in both directions? Uh, I was always used to it being kind of like the lights, where you have to press it to get to stage one, press it to get to stage two, then stage three, and then off. But I saw this thing. It's called wipers back. I think is how they have it uh, set up in the settings. Uh, and it does actually take you back. You cannot continue to proceed forward. You can't go from three back to off. You actually have to press the other button to take you back for, to two, to one, to zero. And I'm thinking now that I have the option to do that, obviously it makes sense having a rocker switch that's available both on the up and the down. But would this also work with a rotary encoder? Now keep in mind, I see a lot of people dealing with rotary encoders when it comes to like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino, but keep in mind this entire project that I'm doing, in case you haven't been following along, is all being done on an arcade USB encoder where I have, and there are two, a couple different versions of them, there's some that have three cables, three like three ports on them, but my version only has two. So I'm thinking about, because it's got, it's got three poles to it. Uh, for the actual turn knob function and I believe the fir the middle one is like the common it's actually the the ground and then the other two on the outside are what operates whether it goes turn to the right or turn to the left and I'm thinking I could be able to take one of those um, one of those uh, two cable pins that go to the USB encoder and I can hook both negatives in my case they're the white wire up to the center pole, the common ground, and then have the two blues, which are the active, have those be on the outer poles, and maybe that would work. But I'm not sure if that's how it adapts. It's hard to find a lot of stuff um, more than just your basic push buttons on USB encoders because not a whole lot of people are interested in trying all these different things. It took me a while to actually figure out, um, and I found a YouTube video to get these rocker switches working with a uh, USB encoder. I'm thinking it can work. I think it's worth a try, but my fallback is going to be to get another one of these. Like another one of these guys here. Uh, these six pin. And I will go ahead and just make it momentary probably. So I can just click it. Click up, click down, go through all the stages. But it is clear now that you have to um, you actually have to hit a second button, not just the wiper button to go from three to off. You have to go three to two to one to off. Let me know if you guys have any experience with that, any feedback. Um, but yeah, that's going to be kind of my next step. And I do kind of want to figure that out um, before I go ahead and start drilling holes in this uh, ABS junction box to put all these buttons on and everything. For right now, we got makeshift with cardboard. And it's proof of concept. Everything's in there. 
Um, it's staying relatively cool. I've been checking it, no overheating, all the wires work. I did have to, uh, on a couple of them I had adapted them so that the wires are a little bit longer and metal was touching metal and it was causing it so that every time I touched one of these buttons it would actually cause this one to go and it would this is the menu button so every time I tried to turn the lights on it went back to the menu button so I went ahead and put some I tried to take it off like connect it because they're just spade connectors and I tried to disconnect it so that I could put some shrink wrap on it um, heat shrink wrap and it wasn't working and I was afraid I was going to pull all the wires out which is what has happened to me in the past so I just put some electric tape over the uh, connectors so now the metal doesn't touch the metal anymore and we're good to go so every proof of concept is there the buttons work and I've tried I've been testing them for about four days uh, probably about 10 drives at this point and so I think it's gonna work I just need to make sure I can cut them to the right size with that uh, junction box and I think we'll be good to go other than that, I gotta figure out how to. Um, again, my concept is to take that junction box and mount it to the bottom of the desk by having a piece of probably plywood on the bottom. Um, and I'm basically gonna make a box where there's gonna be a sheet of plywood on top of the desk, a sheet on the bottom of the desk, and come and holding the two together will be a face plate here, um, going up and down. That way, I can pas basically just peel it right off the desk if I want and there's nothing hard attached to the desk. I don't want to be drilling in or gluing or stapling to the existing desk. Um, not only because I like the desk but also if I come up with a better idea later I want to be able to adapt it without having a bunch of glue and staples and screw marks and all that. So once I get that bottom piece on then I'll be able to take the junction box and just mount it directly just mount it up to it and it'll be right here under the desk basically I'll just if you can see this I'll just reach my hand down right down here and manipulate all the buttons anyway that's enough talk about that we got about an hour left on the drive let's get some exterior and I'll be with you on the drop-off Alright, we only got about 20 minutes left. We're off the freeway now. Just making our way over to the uh, FedEx. Passing by the airport here in uh, Great Falls. We got the interior night light going on in Dom's. Keep right. It's one of the reasons why I chose this time. I normally like to do daytime drives, but when I know I've got some nice interior interior looks, then I'll go ahead and throw on the... Uh, I'll do a later drive. Ah, oh, this guy. Come on, buddy. Hear the Jake again. To my knowledge, what are you doing, bro? To my knowledge, there are no stages of Jake. Deep right. There is a Jake, obviously, but you don't have various stages like low, intermediate, high. Not the worst thing in the world, but it is kind of nice to control that, especially like on a downhill where I can just kind of match it and I always am turning it on, turning it off because I can't get that right speed. I'm either going too slow or I'm going too fast. 
it's nice to be able to dial that in, especially based on uh, every engine is going to be a little bit different. The every based on the cargo, you're running like 40,000 pounds, you're running 100,000 pounds. Uh, momentum's a lot different, but not really complaining. I'm actually enjoying this engine. I've had it on four or five different drives now. I was kind of surprised by it because I've done a lot of 3406 uh, B's and E's and even A's and I actually like this one quite a bit and I can I can hear that two-stage fan kick on and it's it's pretty unique let's go ahead and get the windows down so we can hear it again Ooh, that turbo. I like it. Let's see if we get access through the gate. There we go. Are they taking us through another gate? What's going on? I gotta bring up my map. Nope. Looks like we're dropping off right over there. Well, thank you, Morgan. We take another look at this uh, free uh, Max Atlas container trailer by Pister really cool addition to the game for sure and the fact that they threw it in for free and it's got like 40 or 50 different containers in terms of sizes and brands and everything so even though you're not seeing actual cargo besides the bin itself the bins are uh the bins do vary so that's cool and it's nice to have the different sizes that way you can really throw on all the different weight and you can take a, a shorter one. I can't remember the sizes that they have. I think it's like a 28-footer and then a 48-footer or a 20-footer and a 40-footer. But depending on what sort of engine you've got in there. And here we are. Park and brake. Get the track IR off. Let's go ahead and kill the headlights. We'll go parking lights only. We'll get the windows up. This one I'll turn that on so you can see the right. And I'll stop it and keep going and I'll stop so you can see that I have control over it just like the old school if you gotta hold on to it until it's all the way up all right and get that off um, I think that's pretty much it get beacons off that controls the interior light in this case see on and that is off uh, probably should have had four ways on just so I can press the button, because I like doing it. All right, four ways off, and we'll kill the engine. And there we are. Welcome to Great Falls. And uh, we just took these uh, trucks, light and accessories, 46,305 pounds from Butte to Great Falls here at the airport. I hope you guys enjoyed the drive. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the truck, the trailer, the engine, the skin. Um, I particularly, since it was the first time I'm featuring it, this uh, this 1LW3406E by JVC, the MVP, I'm pretty happy with it and I'm probably going to be running it. It's one of those engines that um, I didn't really used to like a whole lot of 3406s, either the B's or the E's, and I'm kind of getting back into the swing of them. Um, I, it was, it's kind of like, uh, like the way I felt about, uh, Serial Black's Cat C15. I never really ran the C15 a whole lot. The first time I bought it, I bought one from Z Mods, and I don't think it has to do with the fact that Z Mods is just a bad rendition of it i just don't think that it was like my taste and i'm kind of swinging back and forth things that i enjoyed before i'm kind of straying away from and i i just kind of go in cycles but i happen to be on a pretty big kick with the 3406 ease now and this is definitely at the top of my list again link down in the description you can find it free on steam 
the developer JVC, the MVP. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for uh, sticking along in the drive. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can see all my videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.